Imagine a yard where flowers that used to be bright and colorful have died. Their colors have faded, and their blooms have fallen off. It used to be full of life and beauty, but now it's empty and quiet. But even though everything is falling apart, there is still life in the dirt, ready for the farmer to touch it and bring it back to life. There are times in our lives when we feel like our years have been wasted, our dreams have not come true, and we have not used all of our potential. We've all been there, and a lot of us may be there right now. But there is good news. God is the best gardener ever, and he can turn dead places into beautiful living places. God's promise to restore our wasted years will be the focus of our discussion today. Watch until the end and prepare our hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer, because I will also pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of Joel 2.25, God says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. This isn't just a promise. It's a statement of what God is doing in our lives. Today, we're focusing on this strong promise. He's ready to turn our wasted years into times of plenty and joy. As we learn how God can turn back the clock, put life into our wasted years and start our lives over, let's get our hearts ready to receive from Him. First, let's try to figure out why years were wasted. Years that are wasted can feel like endless seasons where our dreams are put on hold, our growth seems to stop, and our purpose is not clear. Every step feels risky because you can't see what's ahead. It's like going through a fog. In these moments, sadness, sorrow, and missed chances block our view, making us feel stuck in time. But even though things are confusing right now, God's Word gives us hope and understanding. Every season, even the ones that seem wasted, has a reason in God's big plan, as stated in Ecclesiastes 3.1. Years that we don't use often teach us important lessons about trust, patience, and resilience. They make us who we are, strengthen our faith, and get us ready for the times of plenty that are coming. God is wise enough to let these seasons not hurt us, but shape us into tools He can use. We shouldn't feel hopeless during these years that seem to have been wasted. Instead, we should seek God's face, try to understand His heart, and make our lives fit with what He wants. We often hear God's voice most clearly during these times of peace and uncertainty. He guides us, shapes us, and helps us learn more about who He is and who we are in Him. At times, when it seems like years have been wasted, it's easy to wonder what our experiences and roots are all about. But these are also the times when our lives are being prepared to be works of art. God is working behind the scenes, painting lines that will finally come together to show a picture that is much bigger than we could have dreamed. Romans 8.28 says, and we know that God works all things for the good of those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose. Every tear, question, and unclear step is part of a bigger plan that God is making for our good. These years that were wasted show how patient and true God is. As we find our way through the fog, we learn to depend on God's direction instead of our own. We learn what it really means to walk by faith, not by sight. These years teach us to listen for God's words more carefully, to seek His presence more sincerely, and to hold on to His promises more strongly. They shape us into people who are firmly rooted in the truth of God's Word. When we adopt this viewpoint, we discover that the years we thought were wasted were actually years of training, growing, and becoming. The years of plenty make our roots grow deep, so when the good times come, we are ready to thrive and bear fruit. Let's look at our wasted years through the eyes of God's endless view, my friends. Trust that He will do what He says He will do. Believe that He will keep His promises and know that He is working in every part of our lives. In His hands, the years we wasted become basic years that are important parts of the beautiful story He is writing with our lives. Now let's look at the hope of healing. It is not just a future event. God's promise to restore our wasted years is already happening. 
He is constantly changing our sad times into dancing times, our sad times into happy times, and our empty times into productive times. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord in Jeremiah 29:11, Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This promise gives us hope and tells us that our past does not determine our future. God knows how to make your life full of His gifts and favor. Getting better starts with a shift in how you see things. By looking at our wasted years through the lens of God's grace, we can see that He can use even our mistakes, bad choices, detours and delays for our good and His glory. To understand that the God who made the world is more than able to change our stories into ones of victory and strength. This healing affects every part of our lives, including our relationships, our jobs, our hopes, and our spiritual growth. Like a good gardener, God cuts back the dead trees in our lives, feeds our hearts, and waters the dry ground of our souls to make sure that the whole yard is ready for growth and life. He pulls out the weeds of fear and doubt and plants the seeds of faith and hope, then loves and cares for them. Taking God up on his promise of healing takes faith and action. Trusting that God will keep his word and following his lead are important parts of this. It's about letting go of the past, living in the present, and moving toward God's planned future for us. To follow God's plan for our lives, we need to be ready to leave our comfort zones, believe in his plan, and take brave steps. It's important to stay gentle and faithful on this path of healing. It could take days, months, or even years for the process to finish. On the other hand, each step we take in faith gets us closer to God's promises coming true. We need to remember that God's plan is perfect and that His ways are better than ours. What may look like a wait is often God's way of getting us ready for what's to come. Through prayer, praise, and the study of God's Word, it's crucial to stay in touch with Him. These things help us keep our minds on God's promises and our hearts on what He wants. They help us remember that we're not going through this journey by ourselves. God is with us the whole time, leading us, making us stronger, and giving us the power to get through anything. Also, God's healing often takes us in ways we never thought possible. He leads us to places and things we didn't know existed that make our lives better in amazing ways. We find out we have skills we didn't know we had, meet people who make our lives better, and get into situations that show God's power and grace in amazing ways. Allow us to welcome the promise of healing with a heart full of thanks. Every lesson we learned in our wasted years has made us who we are today. So let's be grateful for them all. God's love and kindness never end, and we should praise them because they make our healing possible. One of the most beautiful things about our connection with God is the promise of healing. It talks about how much He loves us, how much He wants us to do well, and how He wants our lives to show how good He is. We should be sure as we walk in this promise, because the one who started a good work in us will see it through to the end, until the day of Christ Jesus. We should be hopeful about the future because our best days are always ahead of us when we are with God. Next, let's learn how to enjoy the years that have been returned. Being able to enjoy the recovered years is like seeing the first buds of spring after a long, hard winter. It's a time of growth, rebirth, and plenty of life. As stated in Isaiah 43, 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This verse encourages us to accept the new thing that God is doing in our lives, let go of the old, and move into the new with faith and expectation. The recovered years give us a chance to live out the plans we put off, to work toward the goals we put off, and to get back the time we thought we had lost. It's a good time to grow, produce, and improve our community. And every day holds the promise of fresh starts, the chance to improve oneself, and the chance to leave a memory that shows how good and true God is. But enjoying the years that have been returned 
isn't just about feeling good about yourself. It's about giving God praise with the time he gives us back. It's about using our skills, resources, and chances to help others spread love and make God's kingdom come to the world. It's a chance to reach out to the outsiders, help the poor, and show kindness to those who are hurting in our neighborhoods as the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's savor the recovered years with a thankful heart, a humble spirit, and a promise to live every day for God's glory. Let us remember the lessons we learned in the years that were wasted and use them to guide us through the years that have been restored with knowledge, grace, and skill. These are not just years to live, but years to live with meaning, knowing that each moment is a gift from God and a chance to make a difference that will last. We are encouraged to be brave, to take risks, and to look forward to the adventures God has planned for us during this time of healing. We are told to dream again, to look forward to new things, and to follow our interests with all our might. We should remember how much we loved God in the beginning, sort of like a fire in our hearts, and try to get closer to Him than ever before. Embracing the recovered years also means helping other people get their lives back on track. We are to be a gift and a source of healing for those around us, because we have been blessed and restored. Building bridges, fixing lost relationships, and helping people get back to God are all part of it. It's about being a live example of how God can save us, a lighthouse for a world that needs it. Let's remember to rely on God's strength instead of our own as we go on this trip. Let us be open to the Holy Spirit's direction and let Him guide us in every choice, contact, and activity. We need to be careful in our prayer, worship, and loyalty to God's Word. These are the things that will keep us fixed and on the path of healing. As we go through the recovered years, let us be amazed and filled with awe at what God is doing in and through us. We should be ready for the changes He wants to make, the lessons He wants to teach us, and the gifts He wants to give us. Let us walk in humility, understanding that God's kindness is what has healed us and will continue to do so as we grow, thrive, and give fruit. Embracing the recovered years, my friends, is a journey of faith, a celebration of how faithful God is, and a call to live, live your best life. Now is your chance to leave a mark on the world, a memory that will last forever. Now is the time to welcome it with open hearts, willing hands, and a spirit ready to fly on the wings of God's blessing. Because when our years are in His hands, they are not only renewed, they are also turned into a beautiful fabric of His grace and praise. Let's hold on to the promise that in God's hands, nothing is wasted, no time is wasted and no season is not meant to be. God who made time and is the master gardener is in the business of healing and repairing. His work in our lives shows how gracious, powerful, and loving He is. Let's keep going with faith, seeing every day as a gift, every struggle as a chance to grow, and every win as proof that God is trustworthy. Let's fill our renewed years with purpose, desire, and a deep appreciation for what we have. May our lives show how much God loves us, how powerful He is, and how happy we are that He brings healing. As we enjoy the rest of our recovered years, may we encourage others to seek God, believe in His time, and enjoy the fullness of life He gives. Let's pray to the Lord together, everyone within hearing distance. There are many good things that will happen if you pray this prayer with me. Let's pray to our loving and kind God. I come to you, Heavenly Father, who made the stars and the earth with high praise and respect. God, you are the one who fixes things and makes the empty spaces in our lives into lush gardens. Your love and power have no limits. I praise your name above all others because you deserve all praise and honor. Your name is the one who saves people and sets them free, heals everything that is broken, and wipes away all tears. At any point in time, your kindness is enough, your power is perfect, and your love stays the same. I am grateful to you, Lord, for your endless kindness and goodness. Thank you for giving us life, the beauty around us, and the promise that everything will be okay. 
I know I've done wrong and ask for your forgiveness. I'm sorry that I have wandered from your road, Lord. Dear Lord, make my heart clean and give me a strong spirit again. I also choose to forgive those who have hurt me, letting go of any anger and letting your peace rule in my heart. Dear Father, I believe that you will restore the years that the locusts ate, because you said so in your word. In the name of Jesus, I vow that the years I wasted will be made up for. There is a spirit of inactivity, a chain of not getting things done, and an enemy plan against my life. There are no more attacks of hopelessness, fear, or depression from me. Lord, bring new life into every part of my life that is dead and empty. I pray that all of your divine gifts and plenty will spread into my life. Dear Lord, you heal me, restore my strength, refresh my spirit, and heal my body so that our healing power can be wonderfully exposed in every part of my life. Lord, keep my heart and mind safe from the enemy's threats. Lord, keep your arms around me as I come and go. Keep me away from danger and watch over me with your angels. Please protect me from harm and evil. Show me the way to peace and shield me with your wings. With this prayer, I ask that you watch over my family and friends and bless them. I also ask that your favor surround them like a shield. Lord, I'm thankful for every heart that is opening before you right now as I say this prayer with everyone else. When we pray for each other in unity, we agree on what to say. Lord, give us your Holy Spirit and lead us on our path to healing. Let your love and kindness shine through our lives. Together, we announce success over our problems, healing over our wounds, and joy in the repair of the years we wasted. Your presence fills us, the Holy Spirit soothes and guides us, and the knowledge that you give us everything we need are all things we thank you for, Lord. Lord, turn our sadness into joy. Restore our joy and make us laugh so much that it reminds us of how much you love us and how many gifts you have given us. You have made our lives better and will continue to do so. We pray for your continued help for the knowledge to make the right decisions, and for the strength to keep our faith strong. Your will be done in our lives, just as it is in heaven. Forevermore, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer and answer it. I pray, Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, fill out the form below with the word Amen if this message blessed you. I bless you with all the good things in this prayer right now in the name of Jesus. You can help us share the word and reach more people. To do this, click the like button and share the video with a family member or friend who you know could use the prayer's help. Do not forget to subscribe to the station so you can see more movies that will bless your heart and lift your spirit. We're grateful for everyone who helps us. Being a blessing is a blessing in itself. In the event that you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with a heart that is open and sorry. Your past doesn't matter now. Start where you are. Christ came to find lost people and save them. You are loved by God. God doesn't want anyone to die. He wants everyone to turn away from their sins. Say this easy prayer to be saved for yourself. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a bad person and I need your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and rose again. I'm sorry for my mistakes and want you to come into my heart and life. I want to put my faith in you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. May you hear my prayer, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, I pray. Amen. Following this prayer, you can ask a priest to baptize you at a nearby church and let everyone know about your choice. Baptism is a sign of choosing to follow Jesus. After that, I want you to spend time with other Christians, learn more about your new life, and get to know God better. Please leave your prayer request in the comments part, and we'll bring it to God's attention so that you can be blessed and win. People who believe in God are also welcome to join us on YouTube and around the world in prayer for you right now. Don't worry if you don't hear back about your prayer request. That doesn't mean that God didn't pray for you. You can be sure that we are constantly bringing each request to God, which is what He wants. 
In line with God's perfect plan, we think that prayer can bring comfort, healing, and direction. All glory to God. Have the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ with you.